Hello, 8th grade families. My name is Brandon Nelson, and I teach 8th grade physical science. This is a video that I'm making in order to walk you through some of the details in my syllabus uh, that you don't necessarily have to watch, but I am going to highlight some of the things from the syllabus if you want to follow along or just skip it all together and just carefully read my syllabus. Some of the big important questions that I get in the beginning are what are your email and when are your office hours? Those are both posted on the screen. My office hours are on Tuesdays after school until about 4.15 or 4.20. Some of the things that we cover in this class are physics, chemistry, and then the scientific process. So in the beginning, we're going to go over the scientific method, and that'll go till about mid-September, where we are going to talk about hypotheses and procedures and experimental design and how to interpret data, and basically things that would go into any good experiment. This is all going to be a warm-up for a new club that we're offering this year that I hope you'll consider thinking about. Mr. Steinbauer and I are going to be running History Day and Science Fair Club, where we will uh, give you one-on-one -on -one attention and prepare you for each of these different competitions where you can win scholarships, cash, and other cool prizes. Stay tuned for that. After the scientific method, we're going to get into chemistry. This is an intro level course in order to uh, prepare you for high school level chemistry, which you'll start in your sophomore year. But we're gonna talk about the different forms of matter, how we know what we know about atoms, and how to read the periodic table. The most common question I get is, do we have to memorize the periodic table? Definitely not. Our job is to understand how to use the periodic table for the tool that it is. After chemistry, we're going to get into physics. And just like with chemistry, it's an introductory level course in order to prepare you for the level at high school. Our basic topics are going to be Newton's laws, energy, work, and power. We're going to talk about mo uh, the, the way that we use math to define motion and how to talk about energy and describe it, define it, measure it, and those kinds of things. The materials that you're going to need for this class are pretty simple. You're going to need a place to put handouts. I recommend a three ring binder, but a folder could also do the job. You'll need something to write with. You'll need a calculator and no, your phone does not count. Phones need to be off and away during the school day. And of course, your school issued Chromebook. Please do not bring any of your own personal computers to science class. I will make you bring them back home and they're not allowed. An important thing that you should know about my class is that I run what is called the flipped classroom model. The traditional method of teaching is typically across the country, the teacher stands at the front, gives a lecture, and then there are practice or homework activities after that. The flipped model kind of takes that and flips it around. Instead of you getting information and learning the first time about a subject from me in person, I make videos for all of my content. And then we spend the majority of our class time practicing those concepts through labs and activities and all sorts of other ways to practice. What this does is it allows me during class time while students are working on the new information, it allows me to pull small groups and have a better chance at one-on-one -on -one interactions with students, do some tutoring, clarify things that uh, some students uh, struggled with maybe from a previous lesson, and basically be a little bit more flexible in the day with students. It also affords the opportunity for students to kind of work at their own pace. So if you are a student that uh, has a sport, or you're going on a trip and there's uh, an absence, or you are somebody who likes to take your time and like digest things a little bit more slowly than most, videos are great for that because you can pause, rewind, rewatch, and you can do it from anywhere that has internet activity. So I use all of, or I give all of my assignments through Google Classroom, and as long as you have internet, you can access those. And all assignments are also turned in through Google Classroom. So it should be a one-stop shop for us to say, stay super organized. If you are watching this video and you're a student, you're probably very familiar with this view of Google Classroom. And if you are a parent or guardian, maybe not as much. So I'm especially speaking to the parents and guardians in the room. Students have a view of Google Classroom for my class that looks very much like this. Within a given unit, there are going to be assignments that come pre-packaged with all of the materials that they're going to need. So there's always going to be, uh, or usually there's going to be a video and any handouts and any directions and everything should be in one place in Google Classroom for any given assignment. I also use Google Classroom to give students feedback. So whenever students turn in their work, they're going to get a score on that work and or written feedback. You can kind of think of Google Classroom as the before side, while students are learning, 
making the processing information, interacting with the material, and Infinite Campus is the place where the final grade is going to land. So if you're getting a score in Google Classroom, please know that it is simply for the purposes of feedback. That is not a grade or anything of the such, and we'll go over that in just a second. Let's talk grades. In Infinite Campus is where all of the grades can be found, and there are two categories in my gradebook. The first one is called Learning Goals. This is the category that will actually calculate towards your grade. Basically, it's going to be set up so that every single learning objective or standard has its own little spot in the gradebook, and you'll get a score from 5 to 10 using the rubric that you see on your screen for everything that we do. These scores are generated from tests, labs, projects. You can think of it as what your learning represents. So how, how well did you do on that topic? It is for individual mastery only. We do a lot of group tasks in my class, but you will never be given a grade based on your group. Your uh, learning goals category is based on your learning, how well you understood the subject. It also includes your most current score. So if you ever need to do retakes or if we revisit a topic and reassess a topic, which sometimes happens, it will be your most current and up-to-date scores for those learning objectives. The other category in the gradebook is called practice, and this does not calculate towards your score. You'll have one of four different scores popping up for the categories in this section. If you get an M, that means that the work is missing, and I'm still expecting it from you. A zero would represent something that wasn't submitted, and the opportunity to complete it has passed. One would be something that was turned in, but something is missing, incomplete, or didn't meet the requirements. In order to figure out what still needs to be done to an assignment with a one, all of the feedback will be found in Google Classroom for that assignment. Twos are what you're shooting for. A two would represent work that you turned in and it was done correctly, you've, you've done the job, good job. Important things to know here are that all grades are posted in Infinite Campus and that they're updated on Mondays. If you still have questions about anything from my syllabus or about my class, please do not hesitate to reach out and let me know. Thanks for watching.